Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to 1 Peter chapter 1. Please turn with me in the scriptures. Follow me along word for word verse by verse at the scriptures that you and I will be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Read along with me. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Be a Berean and search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Please, get the scriptures. Follow me along. <clears throat> First Peter, chapter 1. We want verses 3 on to verse 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes, talks right in that verse alone. Uh, what is there? Hath begotten us again, being born again. Okay, which Peter talks about. <laughs> And one of the um, uh, duck and weave tactics of devils is that, oh, well, being born again is just for the Jews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but let's continue. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, what awaits us after we leave this plane of existence, okay? Once, or if we get redeemed, caught up, okay? What awaits us, all right? Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And of course, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will be at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. He will come back down with we who get caught up. We will be his army who comes down with him. Okay? Wherein ye greatly rejoice, brethren. Stop. Wherein ye greatly rejoice. I know a lot of you are going through a lot of stuff right now. Especially because of this disgusting hell day. I understand. But we mustn't let Catholicism damper our joy. And what is our joy? Jesus Christ. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now... <laughs> <laughs> For a season, if need be, if need be, don't skip the if need be. Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. We need to stand for the word of God. We need to stand our ground in these days. And see, the manifold temptations. What is the temptation, especially at this time of the year on the Catholic calendar? Compromise. For love's sake. For peace's sake. Compromise. For family's sake. Compromise. <laughs> Compromise. You may be one that's against all this, not this Catholic nonsense. Praise the Lord. And you might be dwelling with someone who is making your life go through as if it were a ringer because you don't want to get involved. Right? So what's the temptation? Compromise. Give in a little. A little doesn't hurt. Right? After the rudiments of the world. Right? 
that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Your labor isn't in vain. The fact that you, wanting to adhere to absolute truth of Scripture, want to stick to your guns, stick to the Scripture, it doesn't matter if even your mother or your father or your wife or your husband doesn't matter what say at the Scriptures and you're going to adhere to that. Especially now around this time, you're going to adhere to the scriptures and shun this paganism. You're going to get slack for it, especially from those Christians that are woven together by that ecumenical thread. Think about that. The ecumenical thread of this season. Think about it. Think about that. There are people out there who uh, would prefer to die than to have anything to do with Satan's church, Roman Catholicism. But yet, around this time of season, that ecumenical, that thin uh, thread, made so thin it's made out of silk, okay? A thin thread of ecumenicalism. Hey, Join up with your mother, Roman Catholicism, and be arm in arm singing joy to the world, right? Beautiful hymn, which is only sung around this time of the year, by the way. But the point is, don't want to get off on that. Set my piece, done. Just wanted to bring that up because right now, right now, I know for certain that there are some of you brethren out there. Because you see the state of things. You are aware that Christianity, people who are, my, who are even your brethren, are giving themselves over onto it. We see the world getting worse. We see this laughing stock, which is called Christianity, getting worse. And, and we are told in Scripture... That it's going to continue to get worse. But what do we do? Verse 8 and 9. Whom having not seen, ye love. And whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith. What is the end of your faith? Even the salvation of your souls. Hmm. Now that doesn't mean that you've got to keep faith in order to stay saved. No, 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 no. We commit unto the Lord what he is going to give unto us at that last day. Eternal life with him. Okay. And that's what we need to remember, brethren. See, some of us of the Church of the Living God, okay, some of us of the Church of the Living God, it, it's vexing. It's a lie. It's grievous. It's revolting. It's offensive. Yes. Yes. And what this does, what it can do onto so-called rational man, right? And we see, speaking about rational man, you, you remember the toilet paper famine? You remember that? Here in my country, you know, the gist of that was the Jesuits, I am convinced, they wanted just to see what they could get away with. So what do they do? Uh, the media at the behest of the Jesuit order, because you got to remember, Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, controls all the media. All the media is in the hands of the Vatican of the Jesuit order, okay? The Jesuit order, through the media, 
tells you what to believe. Okay? Well, we get a lot of poison from the media. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, because Roman Catholicism is poison. But the media, at the behest of the Jesuit order, put out this thing about the toilet paper, that there wasn't going to be toilet paper when all when they first began their psychological operation known as the Poison Crown. Okay? They put out this thing about, oh, we're, we're going to run out of toilet paper. And rational, grown man behaved like children. Like some of these videos that you uh, look uh, look into of Black Fridays where people storm things and like just, it's like a little riot. It's a mob. America is the mob, okay? But it was like that with people getting toilet paper. And you go into stores and you see it's like, wow. Wow, even the one-ply stuff, right? But see, what was the point of that? Number one, it showed the Jesuit order that they could get away with virtually anything now because people who are glued to their televisions and their radios and to the media. And of course, if it comes from the media, it must be true, right? So the Jesuits found out that most of the populace will go along with what they say. And like I said before, I'm sure that at the Vatican, when the Jesuit order saw the success of their toilet paper famine, I'm sure they were rolling around on the floor laughing. I'm sure they were. But see, the ultimate thing was, you go along with what they say. You went along with what they said. Another example of this is the Trinity. You look into history. The very, like, I think it was the very first doctrine, or at least one of, that the Roman Catholic Church at the first, at its inception, started to push hardcore was what? Their doctrine of the three-person Babylonian, Egyptian, Satanic Trinity. Okay? You can look that up on your own. From, from the, virtually the beginning, Rome started pushing God in three persons. And over centuries of doing that, Christianity, Catholics, they said, and their own writings, what binds all Christian, that line, that thread of ecumenical, what binds all Christians together is that, what? The Trinity. The Trinity, right? You got the Baptists, you got the, uh, you got Baptists, you got Lutherans, you got Methodists, you got some even these, not all Charismatics, but some Charismatics that are, um, believe in the three-person Trinity, yeah. And some of these Baptists are, some Baptists are like really hardcore against Rome, but yet, at the end of the day, they believe in the Trinity. The Trinity, which is of hell itself. And hey, don't worry, you Trinitarians that get left behind, you know, you Christians, and make it, you're going to see your Trinity on the earth. Uh, what is it? Uh, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet? Yeah, you'll see the Trinity on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't worry, you'll see it. It's not of the Lord, because the Lord is not three persons that make one God. That's insanity. But the point is, you got some of these guys who are rabidly against Roman Catholicism. But yet, you say, you do, here, let me, let me put the nail in my coffin. Here's what I think of your trinity. <laughs> So I think of your Trinity. Oh, and see, there are people out there because of the centuries, literally, of this being pounded into people's head. They think that you have just waved your purple fart at them, you know, and you're like going like, okay. They're ready to get the guns out. I was like, oh, he just did that about it. Oh, 
But yet, but yet, you're against Rome. You speak out against Rome. You expose the Jesuit order. But that threat of ecumenicalism. But you're a Trinitarian. Hmm. Another thing this month. Think about this, brethren. Think about what the world is going along with when it comes to regards to Roman Catholicism. About compromise. Like we just read here in verse 6. Uh, uh, where was it? Uh, no, 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 no. Where, uh, yeah, in verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, <laughs> okay, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. And again, what's the temptation? Compromise. 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 Make peace. And then you twist, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. But see, in order to do that, most of the times, what is sacrificed? Absolute truth. You stay within the realm of absolute truth. And so, how do you make peace with them? Most of the times, by staying away from them. There's your peace. Some distance. Okay? There's your peace. But... In the name of getting together, oneness or whatever you want to call it, compromise. And again, you see these people who are rapidly against Catholicism, but yet that thread of ecumenicalism, you're going to join arm in arm with your brethren, the Catholics, on this month. Aren't you? Aren't you? Go back to your mother. Yeah. But that that's enough of that. That's enough of that. But the point is, the point is, brethren, we are seeing it get getting worse and worse and worse. Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter two. We are seeing it getting worse. Paganism is uh, rising. Pride has budded and is blossoming. Okay. And, you know, what, what ought to bind people together ought to be doctrine. But now it's more feeling and tradition. And it's just getting worse. And some of us of the church of the living God are bitter are bitter because of what's going on. I understand that. But we just saw about how we are to rejoice with joy unspeakable. One day, brethren, this is all going to end. Whether you're, whether you're going to die or we're going to be redeemed. One day it's going to be over. One day it's going to be over. But see, here's our plight. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Ezekiel chapter 2. And see, the thing about the guy shoveling coal to the boilers on the Titanic that is sinking, that Titanic has almost broken half now. Pretty much. Her nose is well under the, uh, uh, under the, uh, under the sea thing there, you know. Well gone down. And it's about broken half, where the tip plummets to the ocean floor. And the butt end rights itself for a while before all the air psh, goes out of it and sinks. It's just about broke off right now. And here we are. Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said unto me, son of man. Stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Our instruction in righteousness, how does he speak unto us today? <laughs> the scriptures. And the Spirit entered into me, 
when he spake unto me. Note that lowercase s there. Note that. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation. that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day, and compromising with the world, compromising with Rome. Okay. Okay. That's why we need to stay away from, like, the media. That's why we need to stay away from things of the world because the world is of Satan, the little G God of this world. And Satan's church, Satan's religion is Roman Catholicism. And Roman Catholicism is the vehicle that Satan is driving around controlling everything for judgment against this world, of course. Okay? And this Christianity? Christianity is bought and paid for and in the pocket of the Vatican. Okay? For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. Mm, stiff-hearted. Talk about hardening of the arteries. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. It's like when you, as the church of the living God, the Lord sends you unto his people, the Jewish people. And you as a Gentile, as a Goyim, go up to the Jew and start talking to them about their God. Uh, vir virtually in all my, almost virtually in all my experience. Um, the Jewish people will hear you. Because at first, y'all, look at this cute little goyim here. He thinks he knows something about our God. Oh, that's so cute. Then go ahead and talk to them about uh, Passover being about Jesus Christ. And you're going to see some change. Then you're going to start to see that jealousy that's talked about in Romans chapter 11. Okay? You'll see that. If the Lord has truly sent you to go witness on to his people, the Jewish people. Like I said, virtually, not every time, but virtually every time that the Lord has given me the opportunity to witness on to his people, the Jews, the Hebraic people. Okay? Um, virtually every time. It's like, oh, you're so cute. Look at you. Look at, look at, and it's like, they get people, like, come, here, look at this Goyim. He, he said, look at him. Oh, he even knows a little something about. What are you talking about? The Passover is about Jesus Christ. Huh? What are you talking about? You, you're, you're telling me that that naked mess that was on the cross all those years ago, you're saying that's my God? Huh? His, his disciples came and stole his body away. What's written in the scriptures about that? At this day, there are some Jews out there who will say that to you. Okay? There are. But now also, think about in terms of the Christian. You know, these the Messianic Jews that I am aware of, that I have known, uh, they got it right. They, they got it right. Okay? Uh, they want nothing to do with Christianity because of the Crusaders and the crosses on their tunics. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. But you put this into our instruction on in righteousness with going to the Christian today. Where our, remember our Lord says, I came not to call the righteous, but those, but sinners to repentance. 
You know, hold your place here in Ezekiel because we're going to read all of Ezekiel too. I think we can handle that today. Uh, go to Mark, Mark chapter two, verse seventeen. Instead of butchering it, let's let's read it. Mark chapter two, verse seventeen. Mark chapter two, verse seventeen. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous sinners to repentance and of course look at verse um verse 16 and when the scribes and pharisees oh boy oh boy saw him eat with publicans and sinners they said unto his disciples how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners now a pharisee is someone who takes their tradition, and here's the scripture. Scripture is here, here's tradition. Okay? That's what a Pharisee is. All right? All right? The Pharisee values traditions of men over what is what God hath said. Absolutely. Okay? So, here in Ezekiel chapter 2, where Ezekiel was sent unto his own people, the Hebraic people, Israel. Verse 4, For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. It's like trying to witness unto a easy believism heretic, who are convinced they are saved because they just saved themselves by their belief, and trying to reason with them out of the scriptures becomes pretty difficult because it always comes back to that one thing that they have saved themselves by their own belief. So in their little mind, they don't need a physician because they saved themselves. They are their own physician. See? Trying to witness, you know, trying to, you know, witness to these Lutherans and all these Methodists down the road. Oh, wow. Wow. Methodists in my area, I leave them alone. No, I'll give them a tract. I, I, uh, unless the Lord, you know, opens up something, which he hasn't uh, recently with the Methodists. Um, just here, take a tract. <laughs> That's all. Okay, because brethren, have have you noticed people don't want to hear it nowadays? You could you can provide fact, stone cold fact, truth, but yet people right now today, I don't care. I'm gonna do what I want to do. Contentious and brawling. And isn't it interesting that in the scriptures, it's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a contentious and brawling woman in a white house? Isn't that an interesting comparison? Uh -huh. But as you've noticed, people don't want to hear the truth. Truth is subjective, isn't it? Dependent on your own, truth is dependent on the person, not the truth itself. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Truth is subjective to the world, to the Christian. Isn't it? And trying to shoo people truth in that state is very difficult. And as many of you have seen and realize, people don't want to hear truth. People don't want to hear truth. They're going to do what they're going to do. Verse 5. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. 
I have found recently, personally, myself, that a lot of the witnessing that is being done has become accountability. Accountability. You know, there. I mean, well, it's kind. Of, it's cold out there now, but I mean, there are still times. It's like, can I give you a turn? And it's like, sure. Every once in a while, a question comes up. You know, great. But now it's more of, hey, this is coming. You were warned, but since you're not going to hear, fine. You were warned. And when they stand at the great white throne in front of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to say, I sent my servant so-and-so unto you. And you'll be made to remember it, I believe. I sent this my servant, that my servant, that my servant. And you said no. And you said no. You didn't want it. Because remember, God, it's not like Calvinism. God's not going to force you to do anything. Okay, you got to make the right choices. So a lot of what we are doing today, brethren, at this point, seems to be more around the line of accountability. Accountability. Giving witness onto these people that once we are redeemed, okay, and this dispensation ends, by then it's going to be too late. By then people who may have heard the truth are going to be like, oh wow, they were right. And then they're going to like the children of Israel in the book of Numbers when they blew it of going into the promised land. They brought up an evil report about the land. And then they wanted to kill uh, Aaron and uh, Moses and go back to Egypt. And they said about, you know, their children, Okay, and the Lord said to them, it's like, you know, the children that you talked about, they're the ones that are going to inherit the promised land. You guys are going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years and die. Okay, but what did they do after they heard that judgment? It's like, okay, okay, you're right, we're wrong. So let's go get it anyway. And Moses told them, it's like, hey, don't, don't try to go into the promised land. Okay, you blew it. All right, now you're going to have to go 40 years in the wilderness. Don't go after them. Don't go out at them. Don't. And Moses stayed in the camp along with the ark because the Lord wasn't with them. And what did they do? They go against their enemies and their enemies whoop their rear end. That's what it's going to be like after we get redeemed, brethren. That's what it's going to be like. I truly believe that. Just like it was in the book of Numbers. They've heard it. They denied it. They blew it. And once we get redeemed, you've totally blown it. That's it. This dispensation ends with the redemption of the purchased possession. It's over. Then begins the time of Jacob's trouble. Faith and works. Are you, you twisted devils out there who talk about the law, keeping the law? Oh, you, during the time of Jacob's trouble? There you go. You're going to have to keep it. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. Good luck. Then you'll find out just how perfect you really aren't. Yeah. But see, once this ends, it's going to be like that. Like it was talked about in the book of Numbers. When they, they blew it and they said, okay, you're right. We blew it. Let's go get it. You know, let's go into the promised land. And like I said, Moses is like, don't do it. The Lord's not with you. Okay, you're just going to, fine, Go. And what happened? See, it was already too late. A lot of what we are doing is accountability right now, brethren. Verse 6 in Ezekiel chapter 2. And thou, son of man, brethren, for our instruction in righteousness, especially right now, when people don't want to hear the truth, especially from you, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, Neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee. What does our Lord use in the parable about the seed and the sower? About the thorns springing up and choke the word. And it becometh unfruitful and he become unfruitful. Because the thorns choke the word. And we are among the briars and thorns. 
And thou dost dwell among scorpions. Oh, boy, don't we? Yeah. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Try to warn the self-righteous Christian about that goes to their little church building that are saved just because they merely believed and repentance is a work and prayer is a work and blah, blah, blah. Try to warn those people of the truth. Try to warn someone who is an ite, who exalts a man. Yeah. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Whether they will hear or whether they won't hear. That doesn't absolve us of being ministers of reconciliation. But like I said, it seems to be, at least at least right now, more of an accountability. Our preaching, our witnessing is more of accountability. It's like, hey, today you can be saved. You got breath in your lungs, you can be saved today. You gotta go to the Lord on his terms, but see, that's the thing. So many people want to boot the door and Jesus Christ is the door. They want to boot the door out of the way because they don't like the way that he has chosen, the way of the cross, which is death to little old you. You want your cake and eat it too, don't you? Don't you? And because you want that cake, and you want to eat it too, you'll go ahead and join arm in arm with Catholicism. That very fine th silk thread of ecumenicalism. Take a bow, tough guy, because you've yoked yourself up with the whore. Take a bow. Take a bow. But thou, son of man, Hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Don't be like them. Don't be like them. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Which is again the lamentations, mourning and woe. Being an account, uh, being a, our preaching and our witnessing is more of a accountability. And you know, go to John chapter sixteen. John chapter sixteen. I haven't even gotten into the main text of what uh, I'd like us to look at today. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Beginning at verse 20. On to verse oh, 22. Uh, let's go to 28. Okay, John chapter 16, verses 20 on to verse 28. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament. But the world shall rejoice. You can't take that which is pagan and try to affix onto it that which is of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And right now, though <laughs> for a season, you're in heaviness because of, ma of much ma manifold temptations, right? Our sorrow what are we sorry? What, why do we have sorrow? 
We see what the world has become. We see what is becoming. We have it written down for us of what's happening. And we're seeing it come to pass before our eyes. We don't wish, we don't want it to be this way. We wish it weren't. But it is. And what's more painful is when people don't want to hear. And we who are of the church of the living God, God lives within us. We're like, what's wrong with y'all? Right? See, we are lamenting. Why? Because we are concerned for the lost. It's not about us. I don't want to see these people go to hell. But some are. A lot are. And we as his ambassadors are sent to warn them, to bring them onto the Lord. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They want their cake and eat it too. Verse 21. A woman when she is in travail hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye, and ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. But I will see you again. Not yet. But I will see you again. That's your hope. And that's what we cling to. Jesus Christ is our hope. Okay, And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Why? Because when we see, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. We'll see Jesus. We'll be with the Lord. He is our joy unspeakable. No one, no one. A man, not beast, not life or death is ever going to take that away from us. Though right now you're in sorrow because of the world. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. <laughs> Think about that. You know, like the guys who, they say, well, when I get to heaven, uh, number one, you're most likely not going to heaven. But they say, when I get to heaven, I see Jesus. I'm going to ask him, why did you do this? Why did you do this? Why you do this? <laughs> That's insanity. Good luck. Good luck. You stand before the great white throne of judgment there, boy, the terror of the one, of the Lord the one, you know, the one that you mock, the one that you don't believe in or on, okay? You're going to see him at the great white throne of judgment, okay? And he's going to judge you. Uh, you, you think you're going to be have bravada? <laughs> to be honest, I think that there will be some at the great white throne of judgment will dare to have bravada, chutzpah, in front of the Lord at the great white throne of judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Natural bore on uh, natural brute beasts. <laughs> I, I could picture a couple of people, uh, especially my good friend from England at the Great White Throne of Judgment, having that kind of pravada, you know. And yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto ye have asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. And of course charismatics come to this and uh, try to twist this into you looking at God as a genie in a bottle. That if you believe that, the okay, Lord, please give me a Mercedes Benz. Okay. No, no. No, that's not what, how that works. Okay. If it's according to his will, he hears us. That's in 1 John chapter 5. Go read that on your own time, okay? Do not believe the name it and claim it, blab it and grab it nonsense, okay? For God's sakes, okay? 
These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall shew you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and I'm coming to the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. The reason why, you know, he's not going to say anything to the Father is because, number one, he's in you, okay? The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is in you, okay? And remember, the Father, the soul of the Godhead, okay? Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh, okay? The Holy Ghost, that's the Spirit, and the soul is God the Father, spirit, soul, and body, okay? These three are one. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, just like you and I are. We have a spirit, soul, and body. That's we're made in the image of God, okay? All right? But see, we have the Father within us, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have direct access to the Lord because he lives within us. And the Lord within us, even though we are in manifold temptations and sorrow upon sorrow, our joy unspeakable is that one day, one day, and now, verse 22, and, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. Not yet, <laughs> but we will see the Lord. We will see the Lord. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. No man can take that from you. They beat Paul, they whipped Paul, they stoned Paul. They did everything they could to Paul to try to take Jesus Christ out of him. Couldn't do it. Because once, you see, you come to the Lord as he prescribes, broken contrition and fear of the Lord. You call upon his name and he saves you. Um, he seals you. Once saved, always saved. Eternal security. He ain't going anywhere. See? And that, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. That ought to be our joy unspeakable. But I understand. I understand. Oh, boy, I, I understand. I understand, because I'm there with some of y'all. I am. There is um, there's a dear sister of ours who is going through such right now, at this moment, over the nonsense of this paganism, and she has no choice in the matter. She has no choice in the matter. Okay? She's a maid. All right? She's a maid. Uh, a nanny. She has no choice. Please pray for this dear sister um, who is so vexed right now with everything that's going on. Um, but see, that's something beyond her control. It's beyond her control. And so much of this is beyond us, brethren. But see, we mustn't ever forget what is our joy. We will one day see Jesus. One day this is going to be all over and done with. And these light afflictions that we're going through. Okay. Now I've got to get the other copy of the scriptures here. Because now we're going to turn in your authorized version of the scriptures. To Psalm 123. Psalm 123. It's easier for me to use two sets of scriptures for this. Because um, I can go back and forth with the other set of scriptures that I have here. Okay. Psalm 123. The Lord showed me this uh, a few days ago. And um, hey, yeah, this just, wow. Psalm 123. Beginning at verse 1. Uh, we're we're going to read this whole psalm. We're going to have some stops along the way, too, just so you know. Okay. Psalm 123, verse 1. 
Unto thee lift up mine eyes, O Lord. Oh, excuse me. Unto thee lift up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. And right away, Psalm 121. Psalm 121. Okay, Psalm 123, verse 1. Unto thee lift up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. All right, is your gaze too fixed on these things of the world, brother, sister? I know some of you are in situations and positions where you have no choice. But your treasure is not here on earth, remember? 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 Psalm uh, 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Though right now we might be going through some stuff, that the trial of your uh, faith you know, might be um, uh, precious, okay? What was that again in First Peter chapter 1? What was that? Hold your place here because uh, we're, not, we're, we're not done with uh, Psalm 121. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 7, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Back to Psalm 121. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. You might be thinking that, well, he, he sure seems to be right now. Oh, don't worry. He's not. The Lord isn't slack as how we count slackness. We all got to remember that. And hey, remember too, never forget this. Never forget this. I wanted to be caught up yesterday. I wanted to be caught up 20 min uh, 52 minutes ago. So did you. But who is now of us today, right now, who wasn't of us, of the Church of the Living God, yesterday? Never forget that. Never forget that. I know, we get self-centered unintentionally I mean we don't intentionally make it all about us but we want out of here we want to go home we want to see Jesus but there's a purpose <laughs> to keep to, for accountability at the moment it seems but there's still a purpose if there wasn't I believe we wouldn't be here verse 5 in Psalm 121 the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Now see right there. Okay. Well, you might be facing a <laughs> firing squad. Or you might die in a car wreck. Or whatever. But see, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Can, uh, what is that? A, a semicolon right there, right? Or a colon, whatever that is. Continuing the flow within the sentence. He shall preserve thy soul. Like our Lord says, fear not man. The, the most that they can do is kill your body. They can't kill your soul. Now, the Jesuit order, once they kill you, they'll go after your mother, your father, your sister, your brethren. Yes, they will. But they can't, they can't kill your soul. See, again, with Paul, they beat the snot out of Paul. But see, what they were trying to get out of Paul, they couldn't. Because we're once saved, always saved. Sealed unto the day of redemption. So, and see, that again shows the futileness, futileness, if you will, of this, the flesh, okay, of the flesh, useless, absolutely useless, because what 
the enemy wants to kill in you is the Lord, but they can't. They can kill you, but they can't kill the Lord. Okay, they can't. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. We as the church of the living God, uh, you know, because of past sins when we were lost, or because you're of the church of the living God and you've gotten messed up and you've been handed over to Satan, okay, that the spirit may be saved for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, okay? The promise here is that he shall preserve thy soul. Thy soul. Okay. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and, <laughs> I like that, thy going out and thy coming in. I like that. So, uh, you know how in John chapter 2, they will go out and find pasture where our Lord makes the uh, um, first mention, where he, not first mention, but where he references the redemption of the purchased possession in John chapter 10. Similar to this. The Lord shall preserve thy going out, going out, preaching the word, and thy coming in, coming in, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? From this time forth and even forevermore. All kinds of stuff are going to happen. Might even happen to us. Might lose everything. I hope not. But see, no matter what we lose, no matter what is taken away, no matter what they do to us, that one thing they can't take away from us, that joy unspeakable, brethren, they can't take away the Lord from us. There's no way. And y'all need to remember that. Well, I do, but shh, 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 hush, 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 hush. Stop. No buts. No buts. Get your butt out the way. Okay? Back to Psalm 123. I unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Verse 2. And here's the meteor part of what we're going to be talking about in this psalm. Behold. As the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress. Okay, dependency. That okay? As the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, dependency. And as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, dependency. So our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. Okay. Isaiah chapter. Oh, wow. I, I, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Verses 1 and 2. The righteous perisheth. No man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Now, this, is, this was the book of Isaiah, a dispensation under the law of uh, which was faith and works, no eternal security. But, oh boy, that sure does fit pretty well for um, something that might have to do with the redemption of the purchase possession, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It fits. It sure does fit. Sure does fit. Doesn't it? But that's uh, the, the old saying. The good die young, but jerks live forever. Right? Right. Right. And see, right there, we're going to be at peace. Whether we die or be taken up, 
This is all going to end one day, brother, sister. Even though now we're going through a lot of stuff and the, the, the rampant paganism and people seeking to defend it and, and just the state of the world of how, and then in 2023 coming up around here in America and the, the presidential selection by the Jesuits, um, we're, we're going to be bombarded this coming year in 2023. We are going to more on this on the year end video. Uh, we're going to be bombarded with nothing but political stuff and propaganda to the point that it will be vomitous. Uh, oh, uh, and Trump is uh, like as the Jesuits did with Napoleon Bonaparte. So they will do with Donald Trump. You watch. You watch. But things are just going to get worse. Well, you know, let's know also that in the last days, last times, perilous times shall come. <laughs> yeah. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents without natural affection, truce breakers, stuff like that. Here it is. Here it is. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Okay? And Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, hmm. Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Now remember, the Sermon on the Mount is the constitution, if you will, of the kingdom of heaven. Doctrinally, this has nothing to do with us, but for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? Matthew 6, 21, verse 23. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. How precious is the Lord unto you. No, 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 I know. Very, very. Here's what you do. Stop and meditate. Not, you know, that stupid uh, Zen stuff. None of that nonsense. That's devil. That's, that's witchcraft, okay? But um, muse, think, meditate. Just how precious is that lamb without spot or without blemish? who you, I, put on that tree, the cross, whom you, I, took that hammer and put those nails through his hands and his feet and put that crown of thorns on his head. How precious is he who never did, who did no sin, never sinned, didn't even have a wicked thought whose flesh was sinful, yes, but because he kept God's law perfectly, that sinful flesh, which was sinful in and of itself, but because he never sinned, that flesh was sanctified because he kept the law perfectly, which no man could do except God himself. How precious, how precious is he to you? Before you reactionary, mechanically, Say, well, very. Why don't you stop and muse upon that for a while? Because you know what? If we did some self-examining as we ought to do, how precious is he to you? How precious is he to me? Hmm? I know. Reactionary, like when you hit your knee and you, you, you kick your foot out, right? It's like, well, he's very precious. Okay, good. Yay, praise the Lord. How precious is he to you? What if he asked you to give up that one thing? Oh, yeah! You know, that one thing that he puts his finger on? One thing thou lackest? Is he that precious to you? 
I know, that's kind of deep, isn't it? Good. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot have fellowship with devils. You cannot eat at the table of the Lord and eat at the table of devils, which so many people are going to be doing. Which so many people are doing. Where's your treasure? The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single. Now this is not talking about a cyclops or, or the great eye of Horus. The Lord rebuke you, you wicked devil who said that. Well, this is the, the great eye, you know, it's on the dollar bill. That's... Yeah, yeah, I've run into that. Dear, thine eye be single. Well, that's the one that's on the dollar bill. Ah! <laughs> I, when I first, I, I was like, are you, is that sarcasm? I, you know, I, I like to think I'm um, pretty uh, fluent with uh, sarcasm. Um, uh, my best friend, Brother Alexander, he, he, you got to keep on your toes with our dear brother. You know, that's his second language. I, but I think I'm kind of well-versed with it. Um, so when that, I came across that, it's like, that, it's like, that, is that sarcasm? Like, no, that, that's what, you know, the, the eye be civil. That's what the eye on the dollar bill is about. <laughs> I, I, that's, yeah, you can't make that stuff up. That, that's, that's the mindset of some of these Christians. And I've noticed, too, that you've stopped, if you see this, you've stopped sending me emails about all that stuff. Sorry if to have, offended, have to have offended you, but a lot of the stuff you were sending me was absolute nonsense. Okay? But, never mind. But, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, that means focused on one thing. Not multifaceted. Okay? Straight and narrow is the way. Okay? But broad and wide is the way that leads to death. Okay? So that's what it's talking about. Okay? <laughs> Not a reference to the eye of Horus. Ah! Oh! Huh. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore that light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But where is your treasure? Behold, as the eyes of servants, uh, Psalm 123, verse 2, Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until He until that He have mercy upon us. And Second Corinthians chapter what is that? Four? Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four verses five on to verse seven. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verses 5 on to verse 7. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, our Lord Jesus Christ, in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Not of us. Not of this crude matter. Okay? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. 
Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. You, Church of the Living God, you are sealed, saved, once saved, always saved. God lives within you. We need to be reminded of this more often than not, I believe, because we, our eye, I mean, our eye, we want our eye to be single, but then we see this or are going through that or whatever. And then, you know, like with Peter, you know, he began to sink. He, you know, he had his eyes on Jesus, but then the wind, the wind, boisterous. And it's like, start to sink. Is it easy to always keep thine eye upon Jesus? Is that easy? No. No. It's not easy. Especially when you encounter things of the world, okay? You got people out there who make it, want you to believe that it's, you know, I never, you know, my eye never you know, gets taken away off of Jesus. I'm always... But, you know, these are the people who hurt their elbows by patting themselves on the back or patting themselves on the head, okay? It's not easy, especially when the world is bombarding you with all this nonsense and you get these unstoppable, filthy emails and stuff like that. No, but a just man fall seven times and rise up again, but the wicked fall into mischief. Remember, saved people don't fall away. Saved people fall, but we get up. We don't fall away. People who fall away were never of us in the first place. Okay? Remember that. But, again, this thing about where our treasure is. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Does that mean that we worship this, the skin suit, like so many of these devils do? No, but the Lord lives within us. He is our treasure. He is our treasure. Isn't he? Isn't he? Hmm? And also, go to Romans chapter 8, of course. Romans chapter 8. But what you might not be expecting. Romans chapter 8, verses 8, on to verse 11. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And this is a real simple argument to debunk. People say, well, we're always in the flesh. Our spirit and soul are in the flesh, even according to you. Yes, but see, we're not living in our flesh. Our flesh is not dictating our lives like a lot of these devils do, you know? Okay? Uh, a lot of their flesh dictates what they do, okay? Flesh doesn't tell me what to do. Comparing spiritual, the Lord that lives within me, with spiritual, his word, okay? The Lord tells me what to do through the scriptures, okay? That's how that works. So when you see, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Carne, carnal, fleshly, okay? Letting your flesh dictate to you your so-called religion. Letting your flesh justify your paganism. Letting your flesh justify your ear being itched and tickled because it just sounds so good to you. Okay? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Why? Because you're letting your flesh run things for you. Not the Lord and his word. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capital S spirit, showing the Lord himself, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, also capital S, denoting the Lord himself. You know, Mr. Smiley from Chick Publications, who only attacks truly saved brethren, <laughs> or only shows, excuse me, he doesn't attack, but only shows hostility toward actually saved people who ask him a question. Okay? <laughs> yeah. But um, he said, the capital S versus lowercase s thing is not that big of a deal. Oh, I beg to differ, sir. I beg to differ. Yeah. 
Uh, and he made mention about the pure Cambridge edition versus, you know, his argument was if you got one that isn't a pure Cambridge edition, that doesn't mean you discard it. That is true. That is true. Okay. Or else most of you wouldn't have an authorized version of the scriptures, right? Because what's commonly available in like Walmart is the Holman. That not all the Holmans are pure Cambridge traditions with all the correct uh, punctual and capitalizations, okay? They're not. Thomas Nelson, I, I rest my case, okay? No, you do not discard those. Uh, no, you don't. But, you know, this thing about the capitals for the S, about spirit, that's, that's actually pretty important. That really is. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capital S spirit, meaning the Lord himself. If so be that the capital S spirit of God, the Lord himself, dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the capital S, the Lord himself, spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Right? Right? Because if you don't have the Lord, you're not saved. If you're not saved, you're not sealed. If you're not sealed, then oh boy. <laughs> then then you got to keep the commandments, right? Yeah. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the capital S spirit is life because of righteousness. Whose righteousness? Our own? No, his. Because the Lord lives within us. But if the spirit of him, note that capital S again, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Okay? Quicken, make alive, strengthen. Okay? Strengthen this decaying, sagging skin suit laden with sin. Give you the strength to press on in him. In him. Okay? He is our strength. He is our power. He is our all. Okay? He is our all. Alright? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is everything to us. Alright? He is the one that puts us through the door. He is the one that gets me up in the morning. He is the one who speaks to me every single day. He is the light onto my path. He is my life. I will see him again. Not yet. Okay? Okay? I know sometimes we can't help it. And, you know, like uh, has been said to me, and I love the saying, you better deal with reality or reality is going to deal with you. Absolutely. But we mustn't ever lose sight of that treasure that is within this earthen vessel. We must never let our eyes wane too far away from our Lord Jesus Christ. You can't 24 hours a day, 7 days a week do that perfectly, keeping your eyes upon Jesus. You can't. And if someone tells you that they can and do, call them a liar. Call them a liar. Okay? Your heart can be perfect with the Lord, absolutely. But see, this, this, this cantankerous substance always gets in our way. Always gets in our way. Okay? Now, go to Galatians, and of course, of course, got to finish this up with this. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How precious is he to you? I do not frustrate the grace of God. What do you think people are doing this season? For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. See, someone who's all about keeping the law, to stay saved and be right with God, now, there are some babes out there who are actually saved who might fall for that. But with someone who's been claiming to be saved for years upon years, and they're talking about keeping the law, they're trying to produce something that was never there in the first place. 
because they don't have Christ, they take on to themselves the law, see, trying to make up for what ought to be there and isn't, see. Like I said, a babe, a novice, might get caught up and it's like, okay, so, okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's like, and then one of us of the Church of the Living God, we come to that brother or sister, it's like, whoa, 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 buddy. Okay, hold on. You can't keep the law. You're not, let's, let's, let's go to the Pauline epistles. Let's go to the book of Galatians, okay? Let's, come on, let's talk about this, okay? And then you read and then you go over the scriptures and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. We, no one could keep the law perfectly anyway. It was fulfilled. We don't keep the law of Moses today to stay saved or be right with God. Okay. Okay. But see, when someone comes around pushing and promoting that, uh, see, the law is taking the place of what ought to be there. And what ought to be there is Christ. And if the law is primal uh, prime out in your life, then you probably don't have Christ. A novice or a babe that gets messed up, that's different. You know, someone, uh, a brother or a sister may correct you on that. That's a different story. You got these people out there who call themselves Christians or chosen ones preaching the law. Christ isn't in them. So they don't have to worry about frustrating the grace of God because Christ is not in them. They replaced Christ with what they have done. I keep the commandments. What they have done. I just believed what you have done. What you have done. Yeah. Yeah. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. And of course, Galatians chapter 1, Colossians, excuse me, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, verses 25 on to verse 29, Where are, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill your word, and on this Read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6, when Paul talks about the, the, this current dispensation that we Gentiles, the mystery, that us Gentiles whoop, are grafted into the tree of the Jew. That's what he's talking about, okay? Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, you looking at that? Don't look at me. Look, 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 look. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, we're sealed until the day of redemption, the Holy Ghost. We're sealed with the Holy Ghost. But Christ is in us. So, <laughs> so does that mean that within my person, spirit, soul, and body, I have... Three persons living within me? Oh boy, that would be, that would be, wow. You talk about multiple personalities. His Holiness from Maine did do a really good video. I gotta give him his due on that, where he did those three images of himself. Where he said, we are, we're all th three people, but we're all Brian. Okay. Got to give him his credit on that. That was a really good video. Got to give him his credit. Okay. But so, okay. I, I had to say that. Got to give, got to give it where it's due. Okay. That was, that was a really good video. It really was. But Christ in you. And the spirit of truth will lead you, guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. And Jesus Christ is God our Father. The Lord Christ in you. The hope of glory. The Holy Ghost. And Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? Now what was that? John 14. Read John 14. Okay? So Christ is in you. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. 
Where's your treasure? And that treasure, how precious is that treasure? Is it such a treasure that you want to hoard just for yourself? Or do you want to spread that treasure onto others? You do. But people don't want that treasure, do they? They don't. They don't. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom the fear of the Lord, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. You know what? You read in the scriptures, especially in the Psalms, that we are to declare the works of the Lord. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Okay? Declare the works of the Lord. How Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he shed his blood on the cross. Okay? To cleanse us from all sin. Okay? <laughs> this do in remembrance of me. Okay? Preaching the death, burial, and resurrection. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we're supposed to continue to do. Remember, brethren? And just because that fog, that thick fog of Catholicism is on the world right now, and especially among Christianity, oh, I have nothing to do with Christianity. Because Christianity right now is Catholicism. And hey, what better proof do you need than this season right now with that scarlet, uh, scarlet, yeah, scarlet, scarlet, uh, scarlet silk thread of ecumenicalism to where even the most rabid enemies of Rome are willing to join arms with them. How precious is that treasure to you? And behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. Now what is that mercy? Oh, you know where we're going, don't you? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That's right, boy. That's right. You need to be reminded. I need to be reminded. We all need to be reminded. 1 Corinthians 15, 47, to the close of the chapter. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last Trump. That's not a reference unto President Trump. You idiot. Make your pardon. Okay. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death! Where is thy sting? 
O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. What does that mean? You wouldn't know what sin is if it weren't for the law. You wouldn't know that it, you weren't supposed to covet unless you knew that the scriptures say, thou shalt not covet. Okay, that's what that means. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, 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 my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. First Thessalonians, of course, we have, yes, yes, this is a reminder. I know a lot of you are, are struggling right now, are, are down, weighed down by this pitifogging garbage and the stuff that's going on in the world. It's not getting better. But we are to have joy unspeakable because the Lord lives within us. That doesn't mean we turn a blind eye and be ignorant, ignorant, willfully ignorant, which is stupid, uh, onto what's going on. But that, that, ought not to dictate for us our lives and our walk. Our life is of Christ, who is our all, who lives within us. He is the one who leads us and guides us. He is our treasure. And we will see him again. Not yet, but we will see him again. We will see him. And knowing that the God of all lives within you, that ought to be our comfort. That ought to be our comfort. And you, you can say, well, I know all that, Brad. I, I know you know, and I hope you know that, but you know what? You need to hear it. You need to be reminded. So do I. So do I. You know, because what does, what does Paul say? Um, uh, where, where is that? Uh, is that in Colossians? Where he says, uh, it's uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3. Okay, verses 1 on to verse 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit. Note that lowercase s. Okay? And rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We are seeing a whole lot of confidence in the flesh, aren't we? Especially now, aren't we? Okay? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 18. Come on. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Like I've said to you before, it's amazing. It behooves me how many of these Christians that I have encountered, especially that come from offline here, when you get right down to it with some of them, that when you strip away this, that, and the other thing and all their arguments and you get right down to the root of the matter, you, you do believe that Jesus rose again from the dead. Of course I do. Well, wait a minute. You're saying that, but everything of the way you argue and the, and the directions you are going in says otherwise. And then they continue to prove even more so. I have been shocked, actually, on many occasions by running into these Christians where you get right down to it with them that they don't actually believe in the resurrection. 
<laughs> well, if Christ isn't raised, you know, if Christ isn't raised, then what are we doing? <laughs> you know? But yeah, um, I, I, I'm, I was actually shocked. Especially when the Lord started pointing that out to me. It's like, he doesn't really believe that I rose again from, from the dead. Then talked to, with some of these people. I was like, wow. It's amazing. It's amazing how much of Christianity, when you get right down to it, like you go to this Lutheran church building or this, this Methodist, I'm telling you, these Methodists over here down the road, uh, they're just horrible. Uh, these people, if you you believe Jesus rose from there, of course, it, yes, I do. Talk to them about it. Talk to them about it. You know, go through Romans 8 with them. You know, go through, try to go through them with the scriptures. You'll see, you'll see their actual stance on the resurrection come to light. And if that uh, if that light be darkness in you, how great is that light? Yeah, yea, hath God said. <clears throat> For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Which is what this is about. This will all end eventually, brother. Sister. Today you're in heaviness. Today you're in manifold temptations. Keep your eye upon Jesus. Can you do that perfectly? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? No. It's hard. It's hard. Especially with all the distractions that we get. Yes. That's why disconnect days, where you turn off your electronics and just sit there like a couple of dummies. That, that's, that's healthy. That's neat. Especially if the Lord has called you to do something like this, it's healthy to be like, okay, that's enough for that. I need some desensitization time just to sit down with me and my God in the scriptures, okay? Just us, okay? That's healthy. I recommend that some of you do that, okay? But we have that treasure in this, our earthen vessel, the Lord living within us. And you know here back in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, which I closed uh, because we were reading something else. Here in 1 Corinthians 15, that verse, um, uh, verse 57 in 1 Corinthians 15. But thanks be to God, which give us up the, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, verse 11. These are familiar verses. We've talked about this Many times before, but you need to hear it today. You need to hear it right now. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness as that, that, that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the dark nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others do. Let us watch and be sober. Hmm. Yes, behold as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us for 
For they are, verse 7 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, right there. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile, vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Our conversation is in heaven, eternally minded, the eternal mindset. This is temporal. I know we got to go through it today, right now, yes, but never lose that eternal mindset. And this, Lord willing, is a loving reminder about having your eye on Jesus with the eternal mindset. Okay? That's what this is about. All right? And one verse in 2 Timothy chapter 4. One verse in 2 Timothy Chapter 4, just one verse. One verse. Verse, uh, verse 8. We can't forget this, brethren. We mustn't forget this. <laughs> this th Remembering the et eternity. The Lord who lives within you. What awaits you? Verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing that's you and me don't forget this don't let it slip i mean i know i know you know you need to be reminded so do i how okay so do i we need to be reminded of this we need to be edified and encouraged in this okay no matter what they're going to throw at us, at the end of the day, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. That's you and I, brother, sister. He's talking about us, of the church of the living God. Okay? Psalm 123, verse 4, uh, verse 3. What is God's mercy? To be with him. His mercy is the redemption of the purchased possession. Our mercy, when you get right down to it, will be, okay, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm going home to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's, that's mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Oh, yeah. Psalm 124. <laughs> Psalm 124. I'll just read it from this one. If it, had, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, may Israel not... Oh, excuse me. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Oh boy, yeah. You start, especially at this time and season, you start speaking the truth about things. Yeah. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The streams had gone over our soul. And this very interesting thing about the waters, which we have discussed 
before on several occasions, but I want to remind you of it. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Now, not in every occurrence when you read about waters is it a, uh, be a reference onto people, okay? It is not. No, obviously. But, but in a situation like this, the, then the waters, what is he talking about? They had swallowed us up uh, when men rose up against us. So when you look at verse 4, what are the waters? Reference to people. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The streams had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters have gone over our soul. Only by pride cometh contention. Blessed be the Lord, who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. They can kill our body, but they cannot kill our soul. Remember, we've read, uh, he will preserve our soul and that was in the Old Testament, too. Okay? Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. And this thing about the snare, this thing about the snare of the devil, okay? One second. Okay, excuse me. Second Timothy chapter 2. Verses 22 on to verse 26. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, and a pure heart is a broken and contrite heart. Okay? But foolish and unlearned, or unlearned, questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. So see, when someone asks questions, who don't want to know truth or ask questions, propose questions as a statement not to be answered in truth, but just to cause strife and debate. Stay away from that kind of junk, okay? And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Again, gentle is talking about not taking the entirety of Scripture in one sitting and cramming it down someone's throat. No, okay? morsels, bits and pieces, here a little, there a little, okay? That's what that's talking about. Christianity, Catholic Christianity, which it is, the gentle is there, is the sissified, wimpy, not uh, telling people their sins, a shivering, sniveling little dog that shakes and pisses all the time, okay? No, that's not what it's talking about, okay? Yes, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them belief to the acknowledging of... of the, I'm sorry. <laughs> weren't expecting that, were you? Yeah. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Verse 7 in Psalm 124. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of of the followers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. And of course with that, you go, thank you Lord. You go right to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And brother, sister, you're not alone. You're not alone. As you saw in the, uh, uh, the community section, our brother Jeff from North Dakota, who um, had a hernia and they had to go up to the 
uh, was actually, as I found out, was in the hospital for two weeks. One week alone in that uh, uh, ICU, but uh, another week just in being in the hospital. So that dear brother spent two weeks in the hospital. He needs our prayers. He needs someone to help him. Okay? He, he, he can't do certain things that you and I take for granted when it comes to certain things. Use your imagination of what I'm talking about. Okay? Okay? He has trouble with that kind of stuff. Especially having surgery and the... But you're not alone. You're not alone. And you got to remember this. Our help... Verse 8. Psalm 124. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord who made heaven and earth. What, you don't think he can help you? You don't think he could provide for you? Verse 3 again in Psalm 123. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Yeah. Who are the contemptuous ones against us? The world. And more so, Christianity. The Christian is more our worst enemy today than the atheist or even the sons of Ishmael. Okay? Actually, the atheists that I have encountered are a little bit more respectful than some of these Christians that I've encountered. And that's something. That's something. Verse 4 in Psalm 123. Our soul is exceedingly filled with contempt with, uh, excuse me, our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease. Yeah. And with the contempt of the proud. Psalm 125. Psalm 125. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. You, they can kill your body. You can lose everything. You can go through all kinds of stuff here. But when it's all said and done, the one thing that can never be removed from us, brother, sister, is the Lord himself. That there is a crown waiting for us. That the Lord is there for us, waiting for us. You know, whether he take us or we die. Okay, he's not waiting on us, excuse me. Um, he's there, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, okay? You know, once we die, we're with him, okay? That's what I meant by waiting. He's not waiting on us, okay? But, uh, yeah, okay? As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people, from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Won't rest, stay. Doesn't say that it won't ever be on the lot of the righteous. It says it won't rest, stay there. These are light afflictions. I know it doesn't seem light at the moment, but you know, once we die or are caught up, what 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 is what is this uh, shut off notice about the electricity? Okay, what is this thing about the rent? Okay, what is that barren refrigerator? What is that? Light afflictions, and the light of eternity. And by the way, I've not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. You want to see the mercy of our Lord, and the grace of His provision. My wife and I, we're here to tell you. But our brother Jeff, really good example of it. Of a, of a man who had everything taken away from under him, and yet the Lord is providing for him and all his need. And the Lord will provide all your need, not your greed. Okay? 
For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the law of the righteous. Why? Lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Oh, notice that. Because if iniquity is always there, then sooner or later, because of the nature of the flesh and the constant daily struggle that goes on between it, we might be tempted to drink that Kool-Aid. You know what I'm saying? Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good. And what is good? Well, the scriptures say there is none good, no, not one. Yeah, that's right. But what, uh, according to this context, and knowing that this was under the law, do good, O Lord, unto those that be good. Being good was though was for this dispensation was going doing what the law prescribed. You did what the law prescribed. You were doing good that was considered good. Okay? Because there's only one good, God. Okay? This is not a contradiction with Romans chapter 3, by the way. Okay? Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts, being a reference unto keeping the law. Okay? As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways. Crooked ways. Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. And look at that verse right there. Look at that verse right there. Second, Thess uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, of course. Of course. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, 10 and 12, unto 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Revelation, Revelation, chapter 22, verse 11. Remember this, brethren. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. He is our reward. He's not, get out of your head like he's got a, a, a sack on his back, bringing his rewards like, no. And, my, and, and what does that say? My reward is with me. Being with, paradise. Paradise is being with the Lord. Okay, that's when he's like, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Okay, paradise, you study that out. <coughs> paradise is being with the Lord. Okay, paradise, where the Lord is. Okay, paradise is being with Jesus. Being with Jesus. Okay, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. He is our reward. To give every man according as his work shall be. And let's finish this up. Now with Psalm 122. You see how we worked in that little thing here in scripture? Psalm 122. Uh, is that Psalm 122? Yes, that we are reading. Yes, Psalm 122. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. And, you know, when we get caught up and we're all going to be together, Jerusalem, we're going to be built compact together with the Lord. You talk about a family reunion. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, 
the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord of God, I will seek thy good. And of course, this song of degrees by David is a reference on to what? The kingdom of heaven. Going up to the house of the Lord. Okay? To where the Lord is. Okay? This is not talking about eternity where there is no temple with the new heavens and the new earth. you got to remember that. This is a reference onto the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, onto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Okay? This is Psalm 122 is about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Which you and I are going to be a part of. Even though now, right here, right now, today, brother, sister, we are in manifold temptations and going through a whole lot of stuff. We got to remember, though. We got to remember, this is not it. Got to remember that, brother. And go now. I read this today as part of my devotional time spent with the Lord in the scriptures. And I sent this on to our beloved sister. Go to Psalm 140. Go to Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Then we'll be done. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually they are gathered together for war, aren't they? Aren't they? And yes, we are called to be soldiers. We are, yes, we are. But, you know, we are also here to edify one another, not just to wage war 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay? Even though that's what we are doing when we're out there, yes. But see, we need these times of refreshing. We need these times of reminders. Okay? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Salah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me. <laughs> and cords, they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me, Selah. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplication. The turning point right there in this psalm. O oh God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O oh Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. As for the head of those that can pass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain my cause. I know that the Lord will maintain, excuse me, the cause of the afflicted, and the right of the poor. Blessed are you who hunger after righteousness. Blessed are ye poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. And the upright shall dwell in thy presence. I know. Oh, believe me. I know, brother, sister. The vexation that comes during this season. And I know it's very easy for that to reflect in our daily demeter and our countenance and to be crabby and um, uh, bitter. And I understand that. But we got to remember that we are ambassadors for Christ. And yes, yes, be bothered about what Rome has done. Absolutely. But that can't be the defining thing for us in these days. Because 
The Lord is within us. We keep our eyes on the Lord. Okay, this is not our home. This is not what it's all about. This is going to come to an end. We're going to go to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Don't lose sight of that. Don't lose sight of that. Please. Be encouraged. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. But we rejoice with joy unspeakable. Happy, happy, joy, joy. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Like I said, please keep our brother Jeff, uh, our brother Jeff in uh, prayer. Um, 16 King James Bible Believer, 11 is his channel. Um, please keep him in, our, in your prayers. Keep him in our prayers too. He really, really needs your prayers. Okay. Pray for our sister who is struggling daily with all of this. Um, keep each other in prayer. Talk to one another, brethren. Okay? Uh, for my dear friends, you know, you have each other's ways to communicate with each other. Communicate with each other. Pray for one another. Talk to one another. Be there for one another, brethren. Okay? In whatever capacity it is, be there for one another. Okay? Because we're all we got. Okay, we have the Lord and he is sufficient. But you and I together as the church of the living God, we are what we have. And though everything is going to hell in a handbasket, let us always rejoice with joy unspeakable because we have that precious treasure our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, Christ in you, the hope of glory living within you. And you will see him again. Not yet, but you will see him again. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us. A scary month. Thank you for those of you who help us. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. We are praying for you. And we will see you in the next video.